about altitude. Since we all live and play at altitude in the Mile High City, it's important to know what impact that has on our health. Our nine health expert, Dr. Coley, joins us to talk about this. So altitude can have big and small impacts on our health. Talk about the small impacts first. So, you know, we all live at altitude and what happens when you're at altitude is there's actually less oxygen in the environment. There's also a lower atmospheric pressure. So we have some changes that happen inside our body. The first and most obvious change is that our lungs start breathing a little faster mm -hmm. to make up for the lack of oxygen. So our respiratory rate goes up. The other thing that happens because we're breathing faster is we lose more water because we're breathing off that water. So we have a tendency to get dehydrated. This can also affect our appetite and affect our sleep patterns. Now all of us have probably had acute mountain sickness or altitude sickness where we go up into the mountains, we get that headache mm -hmm. and then we get the upset stomach or you know we have just feeling of fatigue and weakness. That's called acute altitude sickness. All of those effects are relatively mild and they go away if you kind of decrease the rate at which you ascend. So if you don't go up to the mountains so fast. There is a myth out there that drinking lots and lots of water helps kind of stave off those effects. That's probably not true. <laughs> you should stay hydrated, but don't overdo the water because too much water can actually be bad for some of these effects. Mm. And then for us living here in Denver, our blood counts are actually higher. So it's a natural blood doping, so to speak, because of the chronic lack of oxygen in the environment, our body makes more red blood cells than our colleagues at sea level. Oh. That is interesting. interesting that is also right? <laughs> interesting. So I remember when I moved to Colorado many years ago, you know, you feel like you know, feel terrible when you move to you Colorado too. and everybody said you're adjusting to the altitude. Mm -hmm. So I assume you can acclimate a little bit. You're, yep, exactly right. So, so when you first move here, especially coming from sea level, you do feel awful. And the rate at which you adjust depends on a lot of different factors, but it's very individual specific. So you can adjust within a few days or for some people it can take up to a few weeks or even two or three months to completely adjust. And that's exactly what's happening inside your body. You're making those more red blood cells to make up for the lack of, of oxygen in the environment. Now, sometimes if you go away to Hawaii for a week and come back, you can still feel that happen again. Uh, but that second time around, since your body's already kind of adjusted, it's a little faster. But you've been to Hawaii, so who cares? <laughs> also that. Are there any big impacts to your health? You know, and there can be some major serious impacts that can occur with the ascent to altitude. And some of them can be life-threatening. And these are uncommon, but I want our viewers to be aware of them because they can be life-threatening. One is called high altitude pulmonary edema, where you can get fluid filling up in the lungs. Children are especially susceptible to this. Mm -hmm. And the second one is called high altitude cerebral edema, where you can actually get brain swelling and it can progress to death. So like I said, very uncommon, even less common for us here in Colorado because we're used to a little bit of altitude. But if you have friends visiting from out of town or something and you're planning to go, you know, hike a 14er with them, yeah. then it's probably a good idea to at least be aware of, of what, what the conditions are. It's just are. cruel if that's your plan. <laughs> Coming from sea level and let's do a 14er. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good advice. Dr. Pyle Coley, thank you. Thank we you. We appreciate it. Thank you.